So this is my attempt at uh, making my own Wi-Fi controller using the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So if I just take you quickly through the uh, the layout of the board, um, I am put on two of these cheap two-axis uh, joystick controllers. Um, actually, as it happens, I'm only using one axis on each. I'm not using the push button either. Um, there is the keys keypad with five switches on here. Uh, you can see the Pico W and then my power supply. So if I quickly go through e each of these. Now, the um, what I have done with the cheap joysticks is I desoldered the pins uh, that come with it because they pop up and out, which is firstly ugly and secondly take up space on the board. So you can carefully desolder these. Um, do be careful because um, the little contacts are very fragile um, and it's easy to break them. Now you can see here that the, the left hand joystick I'm only connecting up to, I believe, the, the yes, the X axis um, pin. And on the right hand side, I'm only connecting up to the Y axis pin. Now, because of the orientation of the two joysticks, the X axis is actually up and down on the left hand side and the Y axis is left and right. So that is how I'm going to be controlling um, my Rover. Um, the keypad itself, you can see here, it's quite nice. There's only a, a one pin required to the Pico. The other two, of course, are the 3.3 the, the volts um, supplied. Now, each of these are actually sold saying that they work off 5 volts, but actually they work off resistances and you can then read uh, the voltage output uh, using your ADC pins on the Pico W. Um, so that, that is essentially what we do in the code um, to figure out whether switches have been pressed. So each time you press a switch, uh, what actually happens is you get a change in resistance and a different output voltage um, to the ADC pin. Okay, the Pico itself, you can see the Pico W, um, there's only six connections. Okay, so one is the supply power. Uh, the ground, common ground for everything. Uh, there's the 3.3 volt outputs here, and then the three ADC uh, connections to the two joysticks and the keypad itself. Right, um, yes, before I actually, uh, let me just grab the battery. So inside the, the power supply here, I've got a 14500 lithium iron battery, um, fully charged at 4.2 volts, uh, and that provides a nice voltage to the Pico um, and a steady 3.3 volts uh, to the peripherals. Okay, and on the reverse, okay, so you can see here, there's my common ground, um, and here's the 3.3 volt rail, and we've got the other connections to the joysticks. Now, I suppose the last thing I should mention, which is not done on all projects, is that when I connected up my power supply to the Pico, I've put a little diode in here, um, that's simply to protect uh, the power supply. So when you plug in your USB, um, the Pico makes a decision about the voltage from the USB and the power supply. And I don't want any power going back to the to the battery itself. So I just put a, a shocky diode in here, uh, protecting protecting the, um, the lithium ion battery. Uh, other than that, that's it. So you may ask, well, why bother? There are plenty of uh, tutorials out there where you can hack a, uh, an Xbox 360 old controller or PS, a PlayStation. Um, well, where's the fun in that? Uh, firstly, I didn't have one spare. And secondly, this is a prototype. Um, so I am going to be changing quite a bit on future versions. I will be putting it in a screen um, connected to the Pico W and I'll be putting in an MPU so that there's a tilt function on the controller itself if you wish to use that instead of the joysticks to control any particular robot. Now at the moment, this is a one-way controller. So um, this is gonna be acting as the server uh, for the Wi-Fi. Um, but later on, I will make it two-way if I do want any kind of information coming back from my, from my robot. So this could be position or some sort of radar. Uh, and then that will be output onto the screen. But that's, that's a later project. Let's take a very quick look at the code for the controller. Um, so this is uh, written in MicroPython, um, and I've used a, a couple of tu other tutorials uh, just to help me out really with uh, the Wi-Fi connection, which I was not as familiar with as I am with Bluetooth connections. Um, so one in particular I'll refer to was by uh, Tony Goodhue. Now I've actually wasn't able to use his program as it stood um, because he was using uh, one particular type of connection um, 
and I'm gonna be using another. So I'll explain that in a second. So the standard setup for your Wi-Fi, again, keep your passwords in a separate um, file. So I call this network ID and bring those in and then set up your, your Wi-Fi per instructions on the other tutorials. Okay, now what I'm gonna be doing is connecting um, this server to this particular address and the, the client will be looking at this address um, for, for any uh, information, any messages that are coming through. Um, this does not have a handshake, okay? So this is just simply gonna be blitzing the socket with, with, with data. Uh, when the data is read, of course, the buffer empties and the next piece of data can be read. Uh, so a lot of information is lost, but I don't care about that. Um, I want a nice steady stream of the output from the controller to the, to the robot. Okay, so this is the uh, standard way you would connect this up. Um, what I do, because of course we don't have any indication uh, from the board that it has been connected, is that once it has been connected, the, uh, the onboard LED will be switched on, a steady switch on, um, and telling me that uh, I have connection from the server side. Okay, so the next part is the uh, connections to the, the analog pins. And then there's a fair amount of, of just calibrating these very cheap little joysticks. Um, they don't have a great sweep. You'll find that you get uh, fluctuating values. Um, so first of all, I calibrate for the centers. Um, I clip the top ends. Uh, top and bottom in fact um, and then I've got a scaling uh, function here and then this gets the uh, the reading from the keypad now most of the code when you look at other code they'll use 3.3 here but I'm, I'm going to be using integers later on uh, to check the switch states um, and I just found it easier to put it into integer form than messing around with with um, floating point numbers now, one, th one piece of code uh, that MicroPython doesn't have, which is really helpful, is a Z-fill, so that you can fill in strings with zeros, uh, leading zeros, so your string is always of a specific length. Now, I'm gonna be sending uh, a nine bytes string from the controller to the, to the rover, um, but sometimes the readings, of course, from the joysticks or the keypad are gonna be zero, so that will just fill it so that it's, uh, four zeros being sent for the two joysticks, and then there's a single, um, Character sent from the from the switch. Okay, so this is the um, this is the main routine. <clears throat> so we're going to get the keypad values, and again, don't want to go into too much detail here. It's not really the place for it. How the keypad works, but I'm essentially reading off the voltage that we get once a particular switch has been hit. Uh, the default position I call it switch one, so that the rover will be in gear one. And then actually, these gears give me different speed settings on the rover, uh, which I found. Um, if I try to just use one speed setting because of the insensitivity of the joysticks, uh, it was just either fully on or fully off. Um, and this allows me a bit more control on, on the, and it also makes use of the five switches, which were doing nothing at the, at the time. Um, so this reads the joystick values and maps them to values between minus 100 uh, and 100. So for forward and backwards, this would be minus 100 would be backwards, fully backwards, plus 100 is fully forwards. But I don't want to send negative values. When you um, when you actually try to do this with the Z fill, uh, you'll get uh, an error. So I end up sending positive integers, filling those in if there um, if there's any leading zeros required, and then at the client end, I then subtract that value to put them back into this form. So you can see here I've added a hundred to make make all output values positive, which allows me to then fill in the remainder of the string with zeros and always be sending four bytes for the um, x-axis joystick, four bytes for the y-axis joystick, and a single byte for the gear. And then that's sent to the specific address of the of the client, okay? So there's no handshake. I'm not, I'm not looking to receive any signals from that. Um, it doesn't care if it's connected or not. It's gonna be sending whatever happens. So let's look at this in, uh, in practice, see what, what's going on. So you can see it's waiting for the connection. Uh, once it's connected, there we go. You can see the connection to the IP and now it's just sending out data. So you'll see the data changing as I move the, the left joystick is front foot forwards and backwards. So you can see there it goes up to 200 or down to zero. Okay, so it will be sending that nine bytes string through to the client. And of course I've got the 
left and right controls here as well. And then the switch, once I click this, there you go, a slight delay on there, that's built into the, um, and that will give me the different gears that I can then send through. That will be read as the, the ninth byte uh, on the client side. Yep, so essentially that's, that's what's happening from the server side. Let's take a quick look at the, um, the rover that I'll be uh, controlling using uh, the Wi-Fi. Now you can actually use whatever you like. Uh, this was the only one I still had built sitting around. So I made this a year ago as cheaply as I possibly could. Um, so this is actually a, a rocker bogey um, rover. So you can see the pivoting uh, front or rear. Well, it depends which way you want to drive it, but front wheels. Um, and it's made, actually the, the structure itself is made just from very, very cheaper electrical conduits. Um, so the plastic conduit that you would put uh, protecting uh, cabling uh, and then 3D printed um, connectors. Uh, I use the, what I call the crappy yellow um, motors. Okay, so six of them. Um, they're, they're fine for this kind of project, nice and cheap. Uh, now you can see on the top here, I'm using an L298N motor driver. Now this has only got two motor outputs, so I've done this very, oh, very on the cheap. So I'm just connecting one side up to one of the motors and the other side up to the other motor. So there, there's not independent control on the on the speeds of the wheels. Um, each side is 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 controlled um, altogether. So so the left hand side will all be driven same amount. And again, you can see on the top here, you can see the Pico W, and this is connected up to the L298N, uh, including the speed control on here. Now, if I just turn this around like that, you can see I haven't put a, a shot key in here. Um, I generally have the, the power off from here, but this provides a nice, the L298 provides a nice five volts uh, to, the, to the Pico W. The power supply is, again, very cheap. <clears throat> so I put 3D printed my own, uh, battery box if you like uh, and these are uh, recycled uh, laptop batteries so these are the 18 18,000 uh, what are they 18600 um, batteries uh, that you would get out of a laptop um, nice to recharge they give pretty good current so perfect for a project like this and didn't cost me anything uh, yeah there's power supply uh, so there's a, a switch on here just to just to power on and off um, and of course then this will be acting as the client um, so this receives the uh, code from the controller uh, via Wi-Fi and then that is uh, translated into motion for the for the rover now there are two very nice tutorials which I'll put a link to um, underneath the video uh, one is to Nerdcave's um, short videos which I really do recommend that you watch um, they cover everything that you need, um, code and everything else. Um, so I've actually not quite using what he's done, um, but it, it, but it's similar. Okay, so definitely go to that if you want tutorial on the L298. You don't have to use this driver. Um, there are alternatives and the coding is pretty much identical. Um, I just happen to have one of these lying around. Um, and now the other one I would recommend are the uh, videos by Christopher Barnett. Now he has actually done a Wi-Fi control but mine is different. So his actually has a, a, a web page uh, interface with his controller on, on the web page, whereas mine, of course, is going to be controlled from uh, a separate module. Now, of course, the downside to it being Wi-Fi is that I'm locked to my Wi-Fi in the house, so I can't take this outside. But um, Raspberry Pi are, in the next few days, going to be, hopefully, um, activating the Bluetooth on, on this module. So actually this, the, the setup that we've got uh, will work just by changing the code essentially. Um, it may take some time for the software to catch up with the hardware, uh, but that, that's going to be coming. Okay, let's take a quick look at the Rover code um, just to see how it links up with the controller code. Uh, again, if you go to Nerd Cave, um, the connections for the L298 are all covered nicely by him, and also the routines that you need uh, to move your your bot forwards and backwards. Okay, again, this is uh, connecting to the Wi-Fi. And now, in fact, with this one, actually, uh, I've built in a 
it flashes whilst it's connecting. I hadn't put that onto the uh, server side. I can do that as well. Uh, but it will have a steady um, LED on once it's once it's connected. Now you notice that this binds to this particular socket, okay? But it will be reading from the server, okay? So that is essentially what's going on on there. Fine, so there's the code again, some adjustments to get the speeds and so forth. Um, now the data comes in as nine bytes. You can see that there makes it much easier than sort of separating with commas that um, I always know I'm receiving nine bytes. So I strip the data down um, to the, those nine bytes, read off the first four, then the second, and then the final byte of data, which will be the, uh, the button value or the gear. <clears throat> so that's, um, that's how it's processing the information. So what's actually happening, of course, is the controller is sending over continuous messages. Um, these will get lost if the buffer is full. This reads from the buffer, and then that will fill up with um, a message that's coming through. Now, I did mention I do this slightly differently um, to Tony Goodhue, uh, and that is because I'm using um, UDP um, data grams, I believe they're called. Um, and there they are there. Uh, now, these are not reliable, but I don't care about that. Um, I don't mind lost information. And if it is slightly out of order, again, it doesn't really matter at all because of the amount of information that's been sent. Um, this is run fairly smoothly for, an, well, last night for over an hour without any issues whatsoever. Okay, so let's look at it in, in practice. So I'm gonna go to the, um, the server side. So this is the controller and just run that. And you can see it's connecting. In fact, it's immediately connected and it's sending its information. And we go to the rover side, so the client, and it's now reading that information coming from. So basically the, the button is the, I've reversed the, these things here. The button is the gear. And then hopefully when I move the axes, we will see that then converted into code. Now, of course, this is the lowest gear. Some of these wheels aren't working. If I pop up the gear, so you can see the gears now move to three. Higher speeds there and reverse you can see those numbers there. And if you want to turn, we can do the right slightly or the left. And so on. So there's turbo gear, which is slightly insane. Um, of course, from the controller side, if we just look at that, Fine, so, so that's how these two things connect up. Of course, they are connected to Thony at the moment um, via my laptop, uh, but they will be, in the last section of this video, I'll have everything working remotely. Okay, just to show you all of this in action, um, the controller is now connected to the Wi-Fi, as is the Rover, and you will see that I'm now using my Wi-Fi to control the rover. So I've got that in, I'm not sure what gear that was. Um, yeah, second gear. And we want to turn that left, don't we? Okay, so nice controls on there. Turbo speed. So very responsive from the Wi-Fi, something that you can't get if you use uh, TCP connections. It's gotta be done with UDP. Um, so there it is all in action.